Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we have enough knowledge to understand plant anatomy. That is to understand the exact structure of different plant parts. So what we will do as I said, dicot and monocot plants, they vary in their internal structure. So that is why we will talk separately about the dicot and the monocot plants. And we will see what are the differences between the two as far as the internal structure is concerned. So here our aim is to understand the tissue organization of root, stem and leaf. So that is our aim in this section of the lesson. We want to understand how that we know that the plant is made up of the plant tissues. The vascular tissues, the permanent tissues, the simple permanent tissues like parenchyma, collenchyma. But we want to see how exactly they are organized inside a root or a stem or a leaf. So we will talk about the structure of each of them in detail one by one. So let us study the structure of monocot root now. So I will try to explain you the internal structure of monocot root in with the help of a very simple diagram. Okay. Now as I said before, the outermost layer. Now when I am explaining this, I am basically considering that let us suppose this is the bark of a plant. So you just take a cross section of it. So the cross section would look somewhat like this. Now let us assume that we are studying the internal structure of that cross section. Now as I had mentioned before also that the, in, that the outermost layer of the root is made up of the epidermal cells. So these are the epidermal cells. So the, what is the function of this epidermis? So this is epidermis. What is its function? I had mentioned before the main function of epidermis is protection and to prevent water loss. Right? So this is the outermost layer. Now inside this epidermis there is another layer of cells which is termed as endodermis. Endo means within. So this is a layer which is little similar to epidermis but it is present inside and therefore it is known as endodermis. So this is endodermis. So what is this endodermis? Now, within the endodermis, it contains a layer of wax. Where exactly? Let us suppose this is your epidermis. I mean, this is your endodermis. And here you have a layer of wax. Something like this. So, what will this waxy layer basically do? As I said, wax is nothing but fat. Right? Wax is nothing but fat. And what is fat? Fat is hydrophobic. Phobic means fear. So wax is fearful of water. So wax doesn't like water. So it will prevent water from leaking between the cells. So this waxy layer is known as the Casparian strip. So this is known as Casparian strip. So this is basically a waxy layer. Now wax is a fat which is hydrophobic. So it doesn't like water. Since it doesn't like water, then therefore it will prevent water from leaking between the cells. Right? Prevent water leaking. And that is one of the most important function of the outer layer. So it will prevent water leaking. Correct? Okay. 
So basically this will regulate this layer, the endodermis will regulate water and ions to move in or come out. Now inside this endodermis is the vascular tissue. So that is going to be very very delicate. So vascular tissues are nothing but xylem and flowing. They are the conducting tissues. So they are going to conduct all the food particles, nutrients, minerals, water, everything. So now if some uh, foreign particles get inside this area that means it gets inside the vascular tissue that foreign particle might get conducted throughout the plant body therefore it can harm the entire plant right so this vascular tissue should be extremely protected and that protection is provided by endodermis and the caspadian strip so they will not allow any foreign particles to enter inside the endodermis right Okay, now what is there inside the endodermis? Now inside the endodermis, there is another layer of cells here. So here again, we have another layer of cells. So this layer of cells is known as pericycle. So this layer of cells is called Pericycle. So this is basically a rough diagram. So please do not go into the intercellular spaces or the size of the cells and all those things. It is just a rough diagram to explain how it looks like. Okay. So this layer of cells is known as pericycle and inside this we will have the xylem and the phloem. So where is the xylem? So where is the xylem. So somewhere around here we have xylem. So this is xylem. Xylem is that conducting tissue which conducts water and minerals from roots to different parts of the plant. So basically here you can see this round round structure. So but what is xylem made up of? It is made up of tube like structures, right? We spoke about the elements of xylem, the tracheids and the vessels. They are all tube like structures. So here we are only looking at the cross section. So when we are looking at the cross section, we will not be able to see the entire tube, right? We are only able to see the up above view. So these are nothing but tube-like structures. So here we have xylem. And this center portion, the core, is known as pith. So this central region is known as pith. Now where do we have the phloem? The phloem are present outside the xylem. Because you remember when we were talking about xylem and phloem, we always told that the xylem is present towards the center and the phloem is always present outside the xylem. So here also the phloem will be present after xylem. So let us see where the phloem is. So we basically have phloem surrounding the xylem here so these red colored cells which you see here they are basically nothing but they constitute the phloem tissue so phloem again is made up of some tube like structures the sieve tubes companion cells all those things make up the phloem so this is Phloem. Now the phloem tubes are smaller compared to the xylem. That is why you see the periphery of the tubes are smaller. The xylem, the phloem transport sugar in any direction whereas xylem transport water only in the upward direction. Now you might think there is so much of empty space which we can still see like you can see here, this is all empty. The region between the epidermis and the endodermis, is it all empty? Is nothing else there? Well, it is not like that. Whatever region you are seeing as empty right now, they are all filled with the parenchyma cell. And that is why parenchyma cells are known as the, as the packing tissue. So here, basically, you have 
parenchyma cells. As I mentioned before also, the parenchyma cells have many variety of shapes. They can be round, they can be oval, they can even be spherical. So this entire region is filled by parenchyma cells. So what do these parenchyma cells do? They help in food storage. They store food in the form of sugar or starch. Now, if you look at these cells, you will also observe that there are small channels between the cells here, something like this. So there are some channel-like structure through which the cells communicate amongst each other. So what are these called? These channels are called plasmodesmata. So these channels are called plasmodesmata. So what are plasmodesmata? These are channels that connect one parenchyma cell to other parenchyma cell. So what will happen like if they want to pass water from one to another cell, it helps in water transfer. So these are plasmodesmata channels that connect parenchyma cells right and these cells are the parenchyma cells right so let me fill this entire space well this is just a rough sketch to explain you how the monocot root looks like. However, in the next slide, I will show you an appropriate picture to give, which will give you a better view. But I think for understanding purpose, this is clear how exactly the internal structure of a monocot root is. Now, you remember I spoke some time back that in case of monocot root, there is no cambium. So here you see, this is your prime, the green one is your primary xylem and the red one is your primary phloem. And there is no cambium between xylem and phloem. Therefore, there is no formation of secondary xylem or secondary phloem. So this is pretty much the internal structure of a monocot root. So now whenever you get a, a sample of a root, you take a cross section of the root and observe it in, under a microscope. Now by looking at the structure, you can say whether it is a monocot root or a dicot root, right? Now here also a few things to note is, there are some other terms which are often used. We often use a term called vascular cylinder. So what is vascular cylinder? We all know what is vascular bundle. Vascular bundle is nothing but xylem plus phloem. But what is vascular cylinder? So vascular cylinder is pericycle plus xylem plus phloem plus pith. So basically this is your pericycle, this blue layer of cells plus the green layer of xylem plus the red layer of phloem plus the pith. So all everything that is basically inside the endodermis is termed as vascular cylinder because they major, the majority of this cylinder is composed of the vascular tissues. Now why is it called a cylinder? Because it is in the form of a cylinder. Here we are looking at the cross section that's why we are not able to understand. Right? Now there is another term which is often used that is cortex. So what is cortex? Cortex is nothing but endodermis plus the parenchyma cells. So you can say that these brown colored parenchyma cells and this outer blue layer with the Casparian strip, this entire thing is nothing but cortex. So now in simple terms we can say that in a monocot root, the outermost layer is the epidermis, right? After epidermis, this pericycle, this parenchyma cells till the endodermis. 
this entire portion is cortex and after that everything that is inside this is the vascular cylinder so these three things together form the monocot root epidermis then cortex and then vascular cylinder right so i think uh, we have discussed the internal structure of monocot root uh, so I think that's all for monocot root because I, I have already explained about each of these parts like what are parenchyma cells, what is xylem, what is phloem, all those things have already been discussed. So I mean there is no point spending time on them again. So now we will have a quick review on the monocot root. So here you can see a proper diagram of the monocot root. This is how it looks like. So let us have a quick recap of the different parts which we talked about. The first is the epidermis. So where is the epidermis here? This outermost layer is the epidermis. So this is your epidermis. And what is the next one? The next one is cortex. So cortex is nothing but endodermis plus the parenchyma cells. So here you can see this is your these are your parenchyma cells and this is your endodermis. So this entire portion is your cortex. Next is the parenchyma cells which are thin walled with intercellular spaces and endodermis. So this parenchyma cells and endodermis together forms the cortex. So endodermis do not have intracellular spaces. Next is the Casperian strip which is present on the endodermis. So on this endodermis if you see you have the Casperian strips which is a waxy layer to prevent water leakage. Next is pericycle that is few layers of thick walled parenchyma cells. So here you have pericycle so inside this. So these are few layers of thick parenchyma cells. And the central region is the pith. So this central region is the pith. And then you have the vascular cylinder. Vascular cylinder is nothing but this pith plus the xylem. This red colored structure which you see here is nothing but xylem. And the surrounding cells around xylem is nothing but phloem. So here if you look at the structure you can see xylem and phloem are alternatively arranged. This is xylem, this is phloem. Again this is xylem, this is phloem. So this type of arrangement is known as radial vascular bundle. So that is why we told radial vascular bundle is present in roots. It is seen in roots. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.